The Time Charms are the main form of progression for the Rift update, providing you with increased time in the Rift and a much improved Rift Necklace. The Time Charms all have varied mechanics involved in obtaining them, some of which requiring you to fight bosses, and others require you to defeat mobs with unique attacks. Some people in game have been asking me how you can obtain these Time Charms, so I wanted to use this opportunity to show you how you can get all six of them that are currently available on the Alpha. Note that the Stilgor Chateau and Mountaintop Time Charms are currently unavailable, as the Stilgore Chateau one requires Vampire Slayer, meaning that both of them are unobtainable. Without further ado though, my name is Duralius, and let's launch right into it. Starting off with the Supreme Time Charm, which is the first one you'll find, I actually believe that this one is one of the most difficult. You're going to need 32 Little Pads, 4 Leech Supreme Fragments, 24 Dedgehog Spines, and 4 Bottled Odonata. Now, the Bottle Odonata are relatively simple to get. They're part of the intro quest for this region, so I'm not really going to explain it too deeply. Basically, get your bottles together, get your silk wire together, and bottle them up. Now, the things that are actually difficult are the Dead Hogs, which have some pretty unique mechanics behind them, and also the Leech Supreme, which is a boss that you're going to need to fight here. Another thing you're going to need to get are the Little Pads, but they're not too bad. All you need to do to get those is jump in the water and eventually you'll notice a guy coming towards you, the Lagoon Leech. You're going to walk back towards the surface. He's going to be launched out onto the surface. There he is. And then you just sort of beat him up. Once you kill him, he'll drop a bunch of Lil Pads, as you can see here. They drop quite a few whenever they die, so you're only going to need to kill like three or four of them before you get enough. The Dead Hogs are a little annoying in my opinion, though requiring you to hide behind these mushrooms. I personally recommend getting relatively close to them, as if you get hit far away, you will lose the mushroom as cover, meaning you will get smacked around a lot. They recently nerfed these guys by reducing the amount of time they take from you from 30 seconds to 10 seconds, and you get around 4 spines per kill. That means you're going to need to be killing a few of them. Probably around 6 to 8, but it really shouldn't be that bad. Leech Supreme is the boss you're going to need to be killing, and you need to speak to Dr. Edwin over here in the back of the Black Lagoon. You're going to want to hit him where it hurts, and, you know, go through this little tunnel sequence where you'll be led down to the lair of the Leech Supreme. This boss is relatively easy and isn't too bad. This is the first major mechanic in which a little slime ball pelts the ground and you have to hop over it like a little shockwave. It's not really too bad. I'm going to go over through the, the entire boss fight here. I'm not going to leave anything out. I figure it'd be relevant for people who haven't seen this yet to just, you know, look at it. So if you want to just skip ahead to the next time charm, or if you want to just watch this, that's fine either way. The boss isn't too special, by the way. He just sort of runs at you and attacks you like that. The main things you have to look out for are his little, you know, abilities. The Wicked Bombs one is also relatively easy to avoid. You just sort of run around in circles. Moving into the boss's third phase also isn't too bad, his mechanics during the hits phase don't really change at all. The third phase though is a leech swarm in which he summons a bunch of little mobs to hit you. Now I personally recommend taking out the alphas first as they run a lot quicker and are much more annoying to deal with and can definitely take a lot of time from you. You can kind of just combo out the leech swarms themselves, they're not particularly dangerous. The alphas can absolutely ruin your runs though. Definitely make sure you have a decent amount of time when entering this fight as well. If you're trying to enter this with only like 4 or 5 minutes left, you're not going to get it done. I found around 9 minutes to be the sweet spot where you're able to beat it pretty consistently, but you're going to end up like this guy 10B over here if you don't enter with enough time. As you can see, he just got booted out, which always sucks. I really recommend entering with a group of friends as well, because obviously multiple people taking the hits means that any individual person doesn't have to deal with the large amount of damage that you can take in terms of your time. The last little mechanic here, by the way, is a jump rope game minigame where there's a little green spot that you have to crouch into in order to get over the, you know, top part of the jump rope. It's not really too bad. Just running over to the locations is a little annoying, but hey, it's not really the worst thing in the world. This boss fight isn't particularly difficult once you get the hang of it, and neither is the other one, Bakte, that we'll go over later. But once again, if you haven't done this before, you're definitely going to want to know how to do it. And as you can see, we can be in his final phase now. He has 150 health left. It's not going to be that bad. We just sort of slap him around a little bit. And there we go. He is defeated, and we get the Leech Supreme Fragments. You'll definitely have enough for the Time Charm the moment you beat him for the first time, which is pretty damn cool. And then you'll be launched out over to the Lagoon House. You just sort of take the warp back, 
you can just use the eye in the basement to, uh, you know, get a little warp back right here. We have the gill man, go to the intruder, and then you're good. For those who are unaware where to place these, you're going to have to head to the Rift Gallery, which you can find directly inside of the Wizard Tower. Just walk over here, you get warped over, and then you place it on top of the little, you know, pillar that it's on. You're going to do this for all of them, there's nothing special about that. So let's get on to the next time charm. The second time charm is the Mirrorverse one, and I'm not really going to explain this one in detail, as I already made a video on everything you can do in the Mirrorverse. You can find it in the back of this house in the West Village. Make sure you enter with a decent amount of time, at least three minutes, but once you're inside, you will not lose time. Beat the area, get the time charm, it's not too bad. You're going to need some Shadow Cruxes, so you need to kill these guys. They're not particularly bad, you just sort of hit them around a little bit and they'll spike up from the surface of the ground. As you can see, they make these little spikes. Just sort of walk in circles. They're not particularly dangerous. You slap them around a little bit, and they die. Once you do that, you can get enough of them. You can make your reverse time charm, the mirror reverse one, and then you can head on to the third one, which is another pretty interesting one. The chicken and egg time charm is the third one on our list, and it's one that's going to be a little bit interesting. You're going to need to collect three different types of plants in a decent amount in order to get these bunches. You're also going to need to get a proto chicken, which you can get from doing Shania's quest over here, which requires you to get more of these types of plants. You're also going to need to get metamorphic or metaphoric rather eggs in which you need to get a blowgun over here, which once again requires you to get even more of a certain type of plant. Now, in order to get the blowgun specifically, you're going to need to head into Rift Collections, and I'm fairly certain it's part of, I think, the Berberus. Yeah, the Berberus blowgun. As you can see, it requires 60 of the wilted Berberus. Now, you might wonder, well, how do I actually get my hands on any of these materials? And the answer is you're going to need to use a little wand. As you can see, we have this wand of farming. For Berberus, you're going to need to click on the plant with the little particles around it. You'll then jump to another plant. You farm that one, and you get more. It's really not that difficult. This one is probably the simplest to understand. Now, the next one are these little flowering plants, which you farm from top to bottom. They're not particularly bad either. They're relatively quick, and you can get your hands on a lot of them really, really quickly. Finally, we have the funny little mushroom, in which you have to stare at it until it turns red. Once it does, you can then click on it, and you get the little cap, as you can see. Once you get your hands on the blowgun by crafting it up with the Berberus, you can actually shoot the chickens in the area and then shoot them while they're flying to get the eggs. This is not a particularly difficult one, just complete Shania's quest by getting all of these flowering plants in a large enough number, and then shoot some of the chickens. They're not particularly dangerous or anything like that. This is probably the most chill time charm to get, just takes a little bit of farming which isn't really that bad, and honestly the mechanic of blowing up the chickens in the sky is pretty fun. Now, the fourth time charm is the Skyblock Citizen time charm, and in order to get it, you need to go to the Barry HQ, which is in the Village Plaza. When you speak to Barry, he'll tell you that he has a bunch of protesters out front that he doesn't want to talk to, so you're going to have to talk to everybody here. Now, the main mechanic here is just saying what these people want to hear, and by the way, just to help you, the tax amount is $32,000, but once you get all of these people, you know, their problems solved, you're going to head in the back of the area, using the item that Barry gives you, the Montgray pen, you're going to need to also get 16 scribe cruxes. Now, these are the same as any other cruxes, and the mechanic for killing these guys is relatively simple, but I might as well show it off as I have been for the rest of this video. You're going to run over to one of these guys, hit them around a little bit, and then they'll go up into the sky and start drawing a little, you know, shape on the ground. You can actually look on the ground, and it'll turn the little coal blocks into gold blocks. Basically do this for all of the blocks and avoid the little laser beam that's trying to take health out of you. And once you do that, you'll get the scribe crux, as you can see here. These can be used to make a few things, including the crux relic and also exportable carrots, but you really just need it for the time charm here. So yeah, once you do that, you get your time charm, and now you have four of the total eight. The last two are also relatively simple, all things considered. The next time charm is the Living Cave one, and you can find it by going to the back of Deja Vu Alley. Now, this one also isn't too bad, just a little bit grindy. First off, you're going to need to get your hands on some living metal, as you can see here. You get it by farming up the lapis on the wall. There's a little multiplier here, and I recommend trying to get this as high as possible, as it guarantees you at least 15 or 20 total living metal every time you do it. I even had one that gave me 38, 
And I don't know why it did, but I thought that the limit was 20. But basically, you just farm this up, and obviously, if you let the time expire, you get that amount of living metal. Once you do this, though, you can actually create these boot spawn, chest spawn, pants spawn, and hack spawn, essentially, little guys. You can make a boot spawn here. Let me show you how this works. So if you take the boot spawn guy and you summon him, you get auto boots right here. You beat him up. You don't really do too much special to him, as you can see. And then he summons a bunch of blocks on the ground. You have to break the blocks by standing on the place where there are particles. You can see them, they're not too bad, and you can also hit the guy away if you want to, just so that he doesn't hit you. Then you can kill him, and then after you kill him, he summons these little boots, which you can apply onto your armor to give it juice. As you can see, my armor is fully juiced up here with living metal. And once you get a full set of living metal armor, this requires you to get boots, leggings, chestplate, and helmet. You can then go down into this area over here. This is like the still version of the living cave. This area called the living stillness has these guys called Frozyles here. And if you beat them up, you have to kill 20 of them total, by the way. If you beat them up, they'll summon themselves in a little ice cage. You just want to break this cage before they blow up. I actually don't know what happens when they do, but they're not really that bad to kill. And then you'll get a frosty crux. 20 of them and a lot of living metal, two and a half stacks, gives you the living time charm. The final time charm on our list is the globulate time charm, and you get this one by beating Bakte. All you need to do is beat this boss once and get 20 shy cruxes, which are the guys from the first area. Bakte is a pretty interesting boss with a lot of fairly unique mechanics. Notably, he has a slime copter, which is basically just a windmill effect that he can do in the later phases of the fight. He can summon tentacles from underneath you, which you can see by the ground turning different colors. He has these huge tentacles, which he can stick to the ground, and essentially you need to throw the little slimes at him in order to break those tentacles. Once you do, he'll summon a little guy out of them, which you do have to kill in order to get him into the next phase. In order, it seems like the phases are, he starts off with one tentacle, then two, then three plus the tentacle other mechanic, and also the slime copter, and then for the final phase, you're actually able to damage him directly with a blaster, which I think is pretty unique. Another mechanic that he has in the later phases is that he can siphon off or section off a portion of the arena in which if you're not in that part of the arena, you will take the time damage. So keep that in mind. The boss isn't too bad. If you have a lot of time when you launch into the fight, you'll be more than fine, probably over 10 minutes, because time in the Colosseum moves twice as slow, which I think is pretty unique. Overall, not a bad fight. Beating the Shy Cruxes is also fairly easy, just don't look at them, it's not really that hard. And then you get the Globulate Time Charm, which in my opinion, is the most fun one to get. Bakhtay's fight is awesome, I just wish there was more to craft with the Fragments. Overall, I have had a really great time in the Rift so far, and getting the Time Charms wasn't actually too bad. It only took me a few hours, and reasonably with this guide, it can only take you a few hours as well. The grind is not bad at all. Getting all of these items and things is fairly reasonable, and if you know what you're doing, you can really get this done in a weekend, which I think is really, really awesome. The admins did a great job with this, all the boss mechanics, all the mob mechanics are incredible. I'm really excited to see how this plays on main, really excited for you guys to get your hands on all the time charms, and yeah. Make sure you like and subscribe, this video was a little bit to make, so yeah, I would really appreciate that. At the end of the day though, my name is Dorelius, thank you so much for watching this video till the end, and look to the future fellas, because I will see you then.